Hey guys, we're live from the La Quinta Inn. <laughs> Gonna grab a couple harps and see if I can't get a better camera angle here. I got your questions written down from earlier today. And uh, sorry I didn't get an announcement of what was gonna happen, but uh, here we are. So I'm gonna grab a couple of hooks here. <clears throat> there we go. We got two viewers so far. Would be more if I had gotten an announcement, but I didn't. <laughs> sorry. All right. <clears throat> At least I kind of. Hey. All right, I'm back. Phone and the internet. <laughs> I was worried about that. That's one of the... Hey, Linda, how are you? Yeah, Travis, fishing in my mission. You're back, you made it, bro. You guys made it back. Thank you so much. All right, so I got questions written down, um, and uh, I'm going to get to all of them. Hold on one second. All right. And... Uh, I'm cool to uh, answer questions that pop up here. I can only see them for a second. So some of you guys might have to type them like once or twice or even two or three. Or how about this? If you're watching now, wait until I answer these questions first. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the ones that were written down and get to them. Um, I got to go to bed right after this because I got to be up at uh, three in the morning to fly to Massachusetts. And then I'm um, supposed to fly home to, to New Orleans, but the, the hurricane is hitting at the same time that my flight is supposed to land. So I might be stranded in Boston for a day or two, but no big deal. Um, I'll watch some Discovery from Terrible Pizza Hut, or maybe i oh, did you hear that? I think there's like a tornado getting ready to hit here right now. Man, it's blowing out there. You should hear that. It's like... Whoop. Anyway, Bob Leach asked a question. Um, what can I do to better interact with the band? And he said, you know, either on a, on a jam level um, or like uh, even on a pro level. Okay, so I think that's great question it's it's a really good question hey debbie um because it, it, it doesn't it's actually the same whether you're at a jam or you're a professional so the number one thing to do okay number one is is listen listen to the drums listen to the bass the other thing that's good about that is psychologically it gets you out of thinking about you and if you if you start even if you your ear isn't good enough to pick up and be able to repeat on your instrument. Why I don't know. Why I don't know. Even if you can't do that, right? I thought that was an A harp. <laughs> Even if you can't do that, right? Just intuitively to like feel that and, and to not be involved in thinking about self is the very first step in my opinion, in making like really good art, okay? And like my bad nights are bad nights because I'm thinking about Jason and I'm thinking about like, oh, I don't like my tone or I don't like this drummer or I don't like the audience or I don't like this gig or, uh, or, or uh, I wish this pedal was working right or I, I, I think something's wrong with the sound man or whatever. That's how I have a bad night. And when it's a good night, I'm just listening and responding to what's happening. As, as, even if it's the same songs we play over and over and over again, I'm just listening and listening and listening. Now, the other thing is eyesight, right? If, if you can see, you, you want to be able to watch everything that people are doing, like how long they're going. It's nice to make eye contact and let other people know not only that you're listening, but you're listening to them, okay, in particular, and you're and you're digging it and, and making it a fun experience. It, it's easy when you're nervous and you're on stage to kind of go into your own little place, right, and do your own little job. But one of the best things that can happen is making music with your friends, 
and or making friends through music even right so you know it's amazing right it's and so just listening to them letting them know you dig what they're doing is very very cool and it gives you something to play off of when you hear things so if the bass line is boom and you play something like that or that exact thing that other cat's gonna know you digging on what he's doing and he's gonna appreciate that okay next question je minor asked breath and breathing exercises and there's a set and, and he asked another question but let me address that one first so I, I don't really have any breath or breathing exercises exactly, but that video I have called Chugging on the Inhale Only, and I'll, I'll put that in the description box sometime, maybe not, not tonight, but after, you know, maybe I'll do it tonight. It depends. Anyway, <laughs> that video I have on Chugging on the Inhale Only is really good for breath control because it teaches you how to exhale not into the harmonica. Blow, 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 right? So you can, you learn how to like deliberately not play and get your breath back. So like I'll breathe out. All right, I'm back. Um, I don't know if I connecting. So that's the breathing thing. That's the breathing thing. Yeah, there's. I don't know, man. It's just internet here. There's like a tornado. Okay, <laughs> like there's something outside. Like. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it looks like torn. the trees are just blowing over, the lights in here flicked on and off. Yeah, no, it's not you, Finn, is my mission. By the way, what fish, what kind of fish you go after? All kinds? All kinds? Any fish bites, if you got good bait. I'm going fishing, yes, I'm going fishing, and my baby going fishing, too. All right, so... J.E. Minor S, yeah, breathing exercises. So that's a good one for me is that one, okay? Now, now another one is that my video on vibrato where I talk about... <laughs> I really like that. I, I get really of me and everybody else that's constantly like right <clears throat> damn buffering sorry man sorry harmonica man but anyway that that constant vibrato is a little much on me so then um je minor also asked about pinch puckering so like when do you do that not, not i've not heard the term pinch pucker but i know exactly what he means he means like shortening a note like So where I usually put it, right, I'm going to Massachusetts tomorrow, Peter. So where I usually put it is wherever the snare drum is. If it's shot, shot, I'll play it. Right. Hi, Jason. I can't thank you enough for the Pat Ramsey related lessons. Yes, broken. Thank you, bro. I'm going to get some more. I'm going to get some more Pat lessons. Just giving it a break for a little while. So yeah, I drop it on the snare hit or wherever the downbeat is. Rather, if it's on one and three, I might put it on one or three. A pinch pucker, right? Or a little slap. If it's on two and four, it's going to go there. All right. Um, Funked Out Ed said, uh, oh, uh, Shane, hold that question. Hey, man, speaking of vibrato, how do you do that beautiful vibrato on the three double bend? Okay, quickly, I'll, I'll take that one. So I got a video on it. It's on my three different types of vibrato. It's a jaw vibrato. And it's... So I'm saying... Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can do it on any band.
and including blows, if they work. <sighs> one of those days, y'all. One of those days. And you can even do them on overblows. And I always add it, I try to add it at the end, not, not, you know, it depends. You know, sometimes you hit it right away. Anyway, so, yep, and then uh, Funked Out Ed asked, uh, how much did I practice at first, how much do you, did you, meaning me, practice at first before it felt good, like, felt like I was starting to make progress? Okay, so, a long time, like, um, I used to play, like, eight hours a day and stuff, and I'm... I don't think that you have to do that. Um, but I was very focused when I practiced, right? Like, um, I don't know how to use a looper paddle, Zachariah. I never used one. Check out Brandon Bailey. He can teach you. Or or uh, Son of Dave. So, how much time did I practice at first before it felt good? So, in the beginning, I would practice like eight hours a day. Sometimes 12. But it was really focused practice. Like, like I would just play, pause, and try to do it on my harp, and then rewind it and do it over and over and over again until it was right. With little Will Smith, James Cotton, Junior Wells, Paul Butterfield, Rod Piazza, Mark, list goes on, right? Um, Billy Branch, every, everybody, right? Uh, Carrie Bell. Everybody, I just, I play the lick and then I would try to learn it and then I play it again and hear where I was wrong and then do it again and, and then pause it. And then once I learned that lick, I would move to the next lick. And then after I learned the next lick, I would try to play both licks together the way they sound on the record at tempo without the music until I could play the entire solo or song by myself from memory okay so that's how I started but when I started learning music theory and a lot of the stuff that I teach you guys every Friday that's in these videos and that I teach in Skype whenever I have time for that anymore, God. But but when I learned that stuff, okay, I started realizing how these licks were made and why, like why they happen and why they work and how many different things you can do to make up your own ones and without even thinking about it, like just like speaking, right? You know, you're speaking the language. You're not, you know, imitating other people. Do you often grab E, F, F sharp parts for gigs and recordings? I absolutely hate how they sound. I feel like they harass others. <laughs> uh, I play F harps all the time. You don't need a custom harmonica to do overblows. I learned on out of the box marine bands from the 90s. But it sure helps to get in there and lower the action. So, whoever asked that high harp question, we have a high harp question coming up. So we'll get much more. Okay, we'll we'll see much more. Okay, about the high harps. I'm a high harp guy. I like them. I, I, Junior Wells was a high harp guy. Butterfield played on the high harps. It's sort of out of fashion these days, right? See, I, I better love the B-flat harmonica, you know, right? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but, like, you can't make your band play in F, C, and B-flat all the time, right? You, you can play that one in all 12 keys, and I guess you could, to, to the F harp. It cuts. <laughs> Seeger 
said, what's your biggest piece of advice to the younger harmonica players? Get used to ramen noodles. And you're going to experience poverty. <laughs> uh, biggest advice to younger players is learn your history. Go back and go back and learn Little Walter, you know. And it's it's fine to not do that. Play Pat Ramsey, play me, learn Howard stuff. Check out Constantine Reinfeld and Fleep Jairs and all these new fancy cats. But like, go back and learn your history. There, there will always you will always have you will always be grateful for those blues roots that come from Little Walter and Cotton. All of them guys, Junior Wallace, everybody. All right. So anyway, get back to uh, uh, Funked Out Ed's question about how much should I practice. So yeah, in the beginning, a lot. But it's it's really about hours. It's not about years. Okay. Um, so you, what you want to do is, and it's not even about hours. It's about focused minutes. So if you're practicing like a scale or something for 15 minutes every other day, that's really good work if that's all you're doing. If I, I can have a harmonica in my mouth all day and play stuff that I know that makes me feel good, and that's not helping me get any better, right? Do you think there's a place for harp on progressive rock? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I mean, listen to Will Wilde, right? He's doing that. He's, you know, you know, McCulloch would have been great for some of that stuff, too. All right, um... Somebody asked about inflections. I have a whole video. That's uh, uh, Bruce Emery asks about inflections. I have a whole video, and he mentioned in particular Butterfield and stuff on that. And I believe inflections is even in the title of that. So check that out. So let me say, have you ever felt your competitive nature in professional harmonica? <laughs> like in the old days, people always used to say, I'm going to chop their heads. When I was young, I do. Now, now I don't have that anymore. Um, I, I'm competitive with me and, and, and not even about how well I can play more like how well can I behave like how nice can I be <laughs> that's my like back yeah uh, it's the Renato, Sharknado um, and, and I'll get to him um, all right, I got to order some food too pretty soon and go to bed, but I'm going to make it through these. So yeah, uh, yeah, like I try to make my attitude is the most important thing. Did, during COVID, did your practice routine change in any significant way? Um, yeah, I taught a lot more and teaching for me is great practice going over the fundamentals, root notes, basic harmony, box rhythms, improvisation, scales, songs, everything. It's wonderful to be with you guys and learn that stuff right nobody is too knows too little like they're 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 like oh you must be bored teaching us this stuff no i'm not i need to hear it every day like if you're not listening if you're not learning i am and like it's really good to to do that just like a basketball player works on their dribble the rest of their life you know but yeah yeah minutes not hours and hours not years hey jason you keep cutting out out for some reason I can hear you look there's nothing I can do Jace I'm in I'm in a hotel it's hotel internet okay um, this is all I got there's a tornado it was it's either this or, or or nothing so you know sorry bro I wish I wish it was perfect okay but it's not um, Ronnie said tongue slaps and rhythms yeah and I think yeah he I think was is he the guy who was talking about the uh, yeah, I think he was talking about playing tongue slaps and rhythms on an F harp. So, the, you know, he was saying he's having a hard time bending on the tongue slaps and stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I think like, you know, I'm mostly a lip purser, but I, I tongue block a lot, like depending upon the song and, and depending upon the band, really, that, that I'm with. Um, but yeah. I, maybe it's harder on F harps. I don't know. Sunny Boy did it a lot on F harps, you know? So, may I ask how you see the difference between phrases, licks, and melodies? Okay, so a melody is something that's more or less 
written down. Now I can phrase that melody different. <laughs> right, whatever it is, you can just change it. It's not second position is not the best key for somewhere over the rainbow, by the way. Or best position. Anyway, that's like phrasing. Or like take a lick like Okay, I'm on, you know, again, I'm on an F harp. I can just go. So the same lick, I'm just phrasing it. Check out my video called one easy lick, endless possibilities. Okay, so that'll give you an idea of phrasing. So it's like, you know, it's just taking, <laughs> how many different ways can you play those notes? It's like, that's like the major pentatonic scale. So I could play, or, So anyway, I got the same notes, and I'm just phrasing them differently. You can do it with one lick or anything. Next question on the list. Oh, yeah, so tongue slaps should be the same on an F harp. I know it is it is a little higher because it's – I wonder if that's the reason Dennis Grindling doesn't like the F harps, is that he has a hard time tongue blocking bending them. But I don't think so. I think he probably plays great on any harp. But, but anyway, um, Sonny Boy. Sonny Boy played a lot of tongue blocking on F harps. So it can be done, but remember there's nothing wrong with lip pursing as long as you lower your jaw. I mean, you can't, you're not gonna get them tongue slaps, of course, but so I guess maybe if that's what you want, there is something wrong with it. Get the idea. All right, Johnny Sack Deck. Oh, high harps and tongue blocking, cool, I got through that. All right, so somebody said, did I ever have a bad gig and how did I cope? Yes. Yeah, okay, uh, Jace, I started when I was four, got serious around 13, got really serious around 18, got deadly serious around 21. By 30, I was screwed. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've never heard Kim go above a D harp. Oh, man, maybe, right? Oh, yeah, somebody asked, too. I missed this one. Somebody asked, do I think low harps are cheating? Chicken Man, I think you're here, Chicken Man. No, they're not cheating. It's actually, some of them are a lot harder. So Chicken Man, you should get some. And um, the Honer ones, are uh, the uh, I can't say the brand. There's a couple of other brands out there that are great, but the Honer ones are great, okay? But they're all great. And yes, you should get them. And, and I, I, I use down to, uh, I have a low D as my lowest one. I, I used to have a low C and it got lost. I don't know what happened. I never lose harps, never, and it got lost. But I use my low E flat pretty often. I use my low F, I'd say at least once a night. Um, and I and I use a low F sharp instead of an actual F sharp, okay? Um, I don't have a regular F sharp, but people don't often call songs in F sharp or B, but you do need that. be prepared. If they do, you wanna be able to play it. So yeah, I don't think that low harps are a cop out at all. And uh, we were just talking about Dennis. You know, like Dennis can bend notes down there. Uh, I got you. We'll get a Halachak unboxing. I wish I had done that in the last one. Yeah, yeah. The, the low E flat is mean. Someone said the three sixty five is a great low harp. That's true. You got that bottom end on C right there. But yeah, I like the regular low ones. I rocked them, not as much as some other guys, because, you know, we just got done talking about how much I like high harps. So, you know, I, you know, it depends. It depends on the song and the feel, you know. Anyway, yeah. So did I ever have a bad gig, Patrick asked. Okay, Patrick. Yeah, man, I've had tons of them. But the worst ones were the ones that I let it show. 
where I let people know I was having a bad gig. It only makes it worse. It really does. When you announce, when you put that energy out there and you, you know, you let people know, you know, just remember, you know, the stupid old saying, this too shall pass, right? But man, like here, I'm preaching to me, man. You know what I mean? I'm just feeding you off of my plate right now. I need to hear this stuff. Um, how did I cope? So different ways, like, look, you know, I'm sober. I don't do drugs. I'm too alcohol. So I don't go get that attitude adjustment anymore. Um, I don't know. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, I, I will pray. I will pray, but that, that's just me. Um, and I don't, I don't pray for results, right? Like I don't ask God or whoever you believe in, right? I, I don't ask him to fix the situation. Give me a, make my amp sound better. Make me play better. I ask him to help me to get out of the way a little bit and cope with what's going on. So that's it. Um, and, uh, you know, a short little prayer. I might call a friend during a set break. I might take a deep breath. Or how about, you know what, that thing I said earlier, listening. Listening to your voice is the best thing. Fishing is my mission. Hear you, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. It's a different, different experience the last couple of years, man. Different, yeah. Anyway, guys, look, that's all the questions. I'll take anything off the screen right now. So go ahead, type away. I'll get to them as quickly as I can. After playing so many, for so many years, do you ever get any shoulder, upper back pain? You know what I used to get is a little pain right in here and here and here. Amen. Amen, fishing. You know, I used to get it right, right in there, really, really bad, and then it kind of went away, right? Um, the best thing you can do on stage is relax. You got to constantly tell yourself, the shoulders, it's in the shoulders. Drop them, drop them. I had a great gig today here in Indiana, and it was because I was relaxed. Sometimes when we can't hear ourselves good, we play harder. It doesn't help. It doesn't, playing harder doesn't make it that much louder. It really doesn't. So just... Try to relax. All right. I'm ready for some more questions. Oh, besides my work as a musician, how does the rest of my day look like? Okay, so when I'm on the road, it's usually I go to bed super late because I get back late. Like sometimes I go to bed at like two or three. And then usually I have to be up in four or five hours to ride in the van. Um, I'm getting too many questions that I'm not going to remember doing that. Yes. I remember the first time meeting sugar blue and Billy. Yeah. But yeah, so it's a lot of late nights and early mornings. It's a lot of van travel. The food out here is pretty bad. Um, we can't always sit down and eat where we want to eat. So a lot of times it's hot dogs at the convenience store or whatever we get at the bar when we get there. When I'm at home, it's teaching all day and talking to booking agents and everything. Favorite food of all time, lobster first, crawfish second, fried oyster po' boy from Domelisa's. First time I met Billy Branch Chase was amazing. <laughs> Billy was so funny, but I was scared of him. I'll, tell, I'll do it on a blues story. I'll do a blues story on Billy Branch. You know, I'm not telling it here. I'm not telling it here. All right. Did I, if I missed a question, I'm sorry. In a, in a garage by yourself and you play and you have to create your own style and rhythm, how do you break into accompaniment? Okay. Fishing. Bruh. What do you mean by that? Like, you mean like how do I do, how, like accompanying myself because you're by yourself? Or like, well, try, try asking. I'm sorry. I know it's a pain in the butt to type. But try, try asking that another, another way so I, I make sure I get it. Sorry about the vaping, guys. I got it. <laughs> Check out the new John Hopkins study on it. All right. But I don't know. I, I'm not really sure what you meant, bro. Like, if I'm... The best thing to do when you're by yourself and you want to keep a groove is keep a groove. All right. There it goes. And you have to create your own style and rhythm. How do you break in to accompaniment? You mean like accompanying another person? Um... Uh, New England day here, Shane. That's what's up there, Bob. 
The most important thing is repetition. Oh, a coming man. Got to find a way to see if I'm making the right moves. I can keep a groove, right? Yeah, you want to just do the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, when you're with another person, you want to lower the volume. You want predictable rhythms. One, two, one, two, right? You want to nail on the same beats, okay? And you want to lower your volume and get underneath it. It, 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 it it's not it, yes it's redundant but so is a bass okay and and you can do you can change things like say you have the three uh three notes right uh, on one chord so you have the two draw and four this is a box rhythm four draw five draw and then up top six blow is the same as two draw so it's only three notes so I can play that like this. Or I could play. So see what I'm doing? I'm just I'm just changing up what I'm doing, and it's it's never boring. Does playing with Damon Fowler bring on a different side of your playing? Any surprises in playing recently? Yeah, da Damon has a lot of songs that have a lot of different chord changes. He plays very little straight ahead blues, and uh, he doesn't want he won't send the songs to you ahead of time. <laughs> so, so you you know you gotta. You gotta, uh, you gotta keep your eyes and ears open. Let's see. Somebody asked something. Hendrix admired Dylan, who is a songwriter and lyricist that you might admire. I love uh, uh, Tom Waits. I love, I love Bob Dylan too. I love Leonard Cohen. Um, I love Nina Simone. Um, I, I love so many songwriters. My wife is a great songwriter. Um, so many. Yeah. Uh, uh, God. Uh, all right, I'll come back to that. I recently began tongue blocking. It's like learning harmonica over again. I know. Even my seven year old granddaughter asked me if I forgot how to play. <laughs> that sucks, bro. <laughs> Stick with it, man. Remember, there's no rush. You don't have to learn how to play overnight tongue blocking. You know, you can start, you know, on one note. Favorite Waits album? I'm going with Blue Valentine. Yeah, that's just what I'm going with. But, oh. Uh, is that the one that has a phone call from a hooker in Minneapolis? I, I think, I don't know. I think it's, I think that's Blue Valentine. Yeah. Why can't you always choose how you travel and take your own amp, et cetera? Yeah. There's no money. Um, you know, I mean, like, you know, they got to buy the plane ticket. Um, I, it's not realistic. Like, I, I couldn't make the shows, right? I, I couldn't even, like, man, like, and you can't, like you can't demand it. Like like you know when you, if you go to Rom Romania, right? There might be one basement and maybe in the whole entire country, right? So you, you have to play through what they give you. And um, like like I'm in Indiana tomorrow. I have to be in Massachusetts, so I just can't drive and bring whatever I want. I fly. And a lot of times I get there and they're supposed to have something. It's in the contract that they signed and they don't have it. So I couldn't walk off stage and not play and have my agent fight them in a court of law and then get a bad reputation or I can try to do whatever I want, you know, or try to do something to make the situation be, be better. When you were with New Blood, you often played, did solos in, ah, in third and Hold on. In third position, Matt, having a hard time getting the time down. Okay. Um, I'm not sure which song you're talking about with New Blood, like whether it was Dodecahedron or I don't know. If it's the song Mr. Satan, I'll tell you right now, that's a very odd time signature. It, it's I think it's technically five, but it's like five with an... Or it's... it's, it's 
you can count it as four, but it's like four with an extra measure of one. So anyway, that that is that made it. But other than that, what I would do is I would just run your scales in the third. And just one, two, three, four. That was in whole notes one, two, three, four, move two, three, four, or quarter notes. So if you just run them, your scales, your, your time should be good. Okay, any questions I missed? Let me see. Ah, man. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah, harmonica, man, I really wish I could. Why can't you always choose how you travel, man? Man, I don't know. Because blues isn't the type of music that makes that kind of money, man. You know? Even Buddy Guy and um, Kenny Wayne Shepherd and stuff don't get to do things the way they want to all the time. Anyway, uh, let me see. Oh, hold on. All right. All right. Um, oh, does what, what happen, Jace? You mean the phone fall and everything? Or amps, not getting amps? Um, <clears throat> uh, Golden melodies, yeah, I haven't used them in a while. Um, I like the shape of them. I like the way they feel. I like that they're not invented. Um, they are tuned in equal temperament, so chords don't sound very good. So you don't really see too many in my case anymore. When I was young, um, in my early uh, early tw or 20s, my late 20s and early 30s, I used a ton of them. Um, I haven't in a long time. Anyway, guys, I'm going to cut it off here at the 40-minute thing. Hey, everyone, it's Friday. God bless, Tom. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, I got to get to bed. <laughs> yeah, I got it propped up. I got the phone propped up, Travis. Yeah. All right. Love you all, man. Lady, yo, Juwan, what's up, bro? What's up, man? All right. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry, it couldn't be longer. I got to get some food and some rest. I got to be up in a few hours to fly. I'll see you in Boston if you're there. Hopefully I make it home before the hurricane hits. We're maybe evacuating my wife right now. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.